If you are super well versed in perspective, skip to this timestamp. Otherwise, watch my explanation. It's pretty good. Hey, welcome to this Clip Studio Paint tutorial where we're gonna go over the perspective ruler. But first, what even is perspective? I wanna take a moment for that because I feel like I can explain it simpler than most people can. This is a block. It's kinda like a square, just stretched out, right? And check it out. This block has edges. You know what's kinda interesting about these two? This one right here, that one right there? They're parallel. Parallel means they're going the same exact way. But here's the thing. Only in my real life are they going the same exact way. Only in my physical 3D environment are they parallel because on your 2D video image screen, they are not parallel. In fact, when I turn it this way, they're like kind of far apart right here and then they're kind of closer together right here. And if you keep drawing that line, eventually they will get closer and closer until they go to the same point. So you could remember that these parallel partners go to the same point that is p p p and the second thing you have to remember all the time no matter what you're drawing even if it's just your character standing in a white void you have to know where the horizon is the horizon is the point where we're looking dead on something the horizon line basically is where the camera of our image is at what height it is and anything below the horizon line, we're looking down on, and anything above it, we're looking up on. Just like in real life, when we see the horizon, we're kind of looking down at all of the ground, at all of the earth, and we're looking up at the sky. But can a character be above and below the horizon line? Yeah, they can, and they often are. And this is how, whether you know things such as clothing, whether it should be a downward angle or an upward angle, it depends on where that area is in relation to the horizon line. So always know where that is in every single picture you ever draw. PPP, parallel partners go to the same point, horizon line, know where it is. So some of you might have realized I did not explain perspective in the traditional one point, two point, three point perspective. And that's because I don't think it is easy to grasp for starters, especially for beginners and stupid people like me. And secondly, 1.2.3 point is not required. You can have a scene that has a hundred vanishing points. And in fact, here it is. I made one in Blender using 3D cubes because they're all rotated on their different axes. They all have their own vanishing points. So to add a perspective ruler into Clip Studio Paint, you just go to layer, ruler frame, create perspective ruler. And like I said, I don't, I personally don't think 1.2.3 point is super helpful, so I just recommend just always picking three. So then what that does is creates a horizon line and vanishing points on your canvas, and they're all rulers. Meaning when you draw lines, it will adhere to the ruler. To manipulate the rulers, you go to the operation object tool, then you can click on this, which is a vanishing point. That's how you can manipulate these and change it around. I'm scooting the vanishing point here on the horizon. And when you grab these, the bigger dot in the middle of the three, you can move where this line is. And that doesn't really change anything, but it can help you line up where you want your line to go. I want to elaborate on what I meant there, which was that if you move these, it doesn't really change anything. And I'll show you. I'll have it like right there and I'll make a mark over here and I'll make some marks. All right. Now I'm going to undo that move this and make it go the other way and make marks in the same spots and that's what i mean because no matter where you draw the line it's going to go to that point right there it's going that way because it guessed that i wanted it to go to the other vanishing point on the other side but when it goes to the one i'm intending to they're always going to go just straight to the point and of course on the horizon line here in the middle if you click the middle you can change where it's at so basically we have these points we have two going sideways like this and then we have currently a third vanishing point that's above the scene this is an important thing to remember if the third vanishing point which is way up here is above our scene so that means we can only draw things if we're looking up at them i'm going to draw a cube right here i should say a rectangular prism because i don't know if i'm drawing a perfect cube and there we go 
Now I say this is important to remember about your third vanishing point. If it's up, you can only look up. If we try to draw a box where we're looking down, it's not going to work. I'll show you what happens. So let's draw a box that we're looking down on while the third vanishing point is in the wrong spot. It's subtle, but if you're trying to draw a cube or a rectangle, much like this block, it's not gonna happen. This looks more like a gold ingot where gold ingots are fatter at the bottom than they are at the top. And in fact, the more bigger I make this, the more profound that effect gets. So you need to always remember, if we're looking up at a square, if we're looking up at an object, make the vanishing point up. Put it at the top, put it way at the top. If you're looking down, we need to have the third vanishing point below. It's kind of nice because it matches. Looking up, up, looking down, down. And now if we have it down here, it will actually work right. Now at that third vanishing point, we have a more appropriate looking box. Now you can see here that it looks like it is flaring out. It's doing the opposite thing. And I can tell you why that happened. Because here's another thing to remember. If your vanishing points are really close together, it will cause some distortion. Things that you see in lens cameras sometimes, like fisheye lenses, that sort of thing will happen. So if I move my vanishing point like twice as much downwards as it was, and then I redraw a box, it's going to be less flared out. This look reminds me of Minecraft, because if you ever play Minecraft and look at the edges of your screen as you're playing, it does this foreshortening flare out thing. It distorts the perspective a little bit. So now, if I try to draw a box with the third vanishing point much further below the horizon, it looks more natural, less extreme. If you ever want to draw something with massive scale, you would want to put the vanishing points closer together in order to get that flared out, distorted looking perspective. But now, with vanishing points in appropriate places, that looks, that looks, that, that looks like a good box to me. I'll say that much. So here's another problem that you can run into with the perspective ruler. See how I just turned this from purple to green? If all of a sudden the ruler seems like it's not working anymore, it's maybe because you accidentally turned it off. Because that's what this means. If it's green, it's off. If it's purple, that means it's on. If it's purple, it's powered. That's how I remember it. One really cool tip is that sometimes it's just hard to see even what's going on. It looks just like a lot of lines. So a really awesome thing you could do is go to Layer, New Layer, 3D Layer, and that added a new 3D layer to our scene. And as you can see, it kind of made our other perspective ruler disappear. So what you have to do is go to your layers, see that red X on our new layer that we just made, just right click it and hit show ruler. Then go back to the perspective ruler layer and dang, it's generated a 3D looking floor space, like a checkerboard pattern. And now it's just more easy to see the illusion of 3D space on our screen. Now let's say you have your perspective ruler and you want to work on other layers and have it follow the ruler. All you have to do is make sure that this check mark is on in between the icon and the thumbnail for the layer right here. Just make sure that check mark's on. And then if I make a new layer, it's still going to follow the perspective ruler. And cool thing is, is that I'm just making a mark right here and I'm holding it down. And if you move it around, it will align your drawing line to different vanishing points, depending on whichever closest your cursor is to. So let's say I have another object in the scene with a rotated cube, so I need another vanishing point. To do that, you just have to go to Rulers, Perspective Ruler, Add Vanishing Point, and then click wherever you want your vanishing point to be, and then you have to click again to make this line, then another line, and there we go. Now I'll switch to the Object tool, and we can see right there is my vanishing point. And then you can move that to where it should go for whatever object you're drawing. By the way, do vanishing points have to be on the horizon? No, no they don't. It just depends on the rotation of your object. So let's say you need to delete 
a finishing point. You messed up, you got way too many. They just right click it, then hit delete. Pretty easy. So that is it for this Clip Studio tutorial. The Perspective Ruler is a really awesome tool for speeding up things instead of guesstimating all the time, but if you rely on it too much, it can hold you back a bit because imagine me trying to draw this Minecraft OC using the Perspective Ruler. That would have taken me probably five times or ten times as long to do. But the fact that I can guesstimate where vanishing points would be and make lines that follow that trajectory is such a time-saving skill and that is actually what pros do. So, I would use the perspective ruler as a little assistant. But don't rely on it, don't make it your master. That's my advice at least, I hope it helps. And as always, I'll see you in the next Clip Studio Paint tutorial.